Welcome, welcome to Advanced Art. I hope everybody's doing good. And that not getting bored out of their wits. Sorry, not all the way in, but okay. So um, last week I showed a video of me painting something and I thought that's not really helping. So you guys learn the techniques you need because I want to go through a bunch of different techniques that you could use to make your abstract painting. And I also want to demonstrate something really fun in our creative journals. I'm working on a cute painting. But I want to, um, I'm still gonna paint my little lamy, and I'll show you the finished product. But I wanna show you a technique on here that we can do. Um, that one I to show you, that has to do with abstract. So a couple things. I'm gonna show you how to use a palette knife. Some of you might already know, and that's awesome. Um, I wanna show you, some of you already have done some techniques with um, tape, making a little more abstract, but when, you use tape on a canvas, I want you to take your fingernail before you paint anything and rub the edge. That'll keep a lot of the paint from going underneath and just on the edge that you're going to be painting. So this is just a canvas I painted a long time ago, kind of grungy looking, I liked it. So I thought I'm just going to add some stuff to it. So this portion is going to be my tape. This is just my, my um, example board. I can get the whole thing in. So I'm going to be painting um, different things. I'm going to use my palette paints on here. I'm going to show you how to stipple, different dragging techniques, and just some fun stuff. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to use... Ooh, I wish you were here, then you can give me suggestions. But I'll just take a blue, like a cobalt blue. Is that what I want? Or is that what do I want to do? Right. Maybe a silver. Okay, I'll take a silver. Silver one. And I just think about silver and black. That'd be cool. That would be a fun effect. So how is everybody doing in our quarantine? What are you finding to keep yourself, your mind occupied? What are you doing to keep hope alive in your life? Um for me, I'm very religious, so there's lots of prayers, lots of music, uplifting music that I listen to. And of course, I read my scriptures. That gives me hope. Okay, so basically you're just, and I don't know why I'm using that brush. <laughs> this is a great brush to use when you're filling in paint. You just don't, the only purpose you have right now is just to fill it in, and this is an awesome brush to use. About a one inch flat. Just put it on. So I'm just mixing my black and my silver and I'm just putting it down. And I'm gonna do that over here. Just put it down over that. I don't know if I wanna get rid of that. So I think I'm just gonna do this area here. And then when it dries, we'll pull it off and see what we get. And that's fun. Might have to add more paint. Just kind of, you can go different directions with your brush. You can use just the same brush strokes. So this one, I'm kind of going this way. This one, I've kind of done a cross hatch and I'm out of paint. Okay, next technique, we'll do some blues. With the palette knife, I just love the palette knife effect. I have some really nice metal ones that are packed away in a storage unit. So I'm just going to use this one and I'm going to take and I'm going to load my pellet knife and you're going to use the back side of it to load. So you're just going to press down in. Look, it's on the back. Front has nothing. This is what I'm going to put down on the canvas. Hopefully you can see it. And I'm going to do um, kind of a push down and pull off. So it's like push down, pull off. Let's get some glue in there. Push down, pull off. And it's kind of fun to do a couple colors. You're just pushing and pulling. Um, I get some white. Wait, this one's thicker. Okay. 
Now with, um, let's say you're going to create a painting, a scenery, and this is going to be your sky. So there's not a lot of mixing that goes on when you do a palette painting. Some people like to mix a little more. So you can just put your colors down and it just leaves. And I will tell you, this takes a lot of paint. You will use a lot of paint when you use this technique. So don't be shy to squeeze out those tubes. You know how I'm always saying, conserve, conserve, don't use so much paint. Well, you are going to use a lot of paint when you do a palette knife painting. You can fill it in. And you're just kind of doing, some people maybe want to do a pull down. And there's so many, you don't have to go one direction. This is just pulling it down. 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 Going across. Pulling it down. It's just fun. If you go in and you just keep doing this, your color is just going to end up being one messy color. So you want to leave some of those bright, bright colors there. If you wanted to do your whole canvas with three colors, two colors, usually three colors are good, good mix. You could just do this technique all over your um, canvas. But what would be really cool is if you had um, shapes in mind. So like a circle right here. Let's say, let's do that really quick. That'd be fun. It'd be a fun thing to do. Okay, let's say I want to do now I'm wiping this off because I want to use just white. So let's say I want to do a circle. So you can take a um, pencil, or maybe a white colored pencil, which looks better. And you're going to just do, you're just going to fill in a circle area with your palette knife. A little blue in there, but that's okay. Okay, Let's say I do this. Wipe it off again. I'm gonna add some blues. So we're gonna do this technique here with the white, and you can do different shapes all over. Or let's say you want to do um, maybe a horse. So this white would be a horse. So you paint your horse shape first. And then you take your blue. And if you want to do, let's say you're doing blue, greens. Have some different shades of greens. You can do greens. I'm going to do one more color. It's always fun to add more, right? Ooh, that's like metallic. That would be cool. Okay, so I'm going to build around this circle. This really fun circle, right? And just kind of start leaning my paint. Lots of colors. That way. And the brass over here. Palette paint is so fun. You can do so much with it. Oops. That paint didn't even go on. It's fine. Sometimes I flip my canvas because it's kind of hard to get in there, right? So I'm pulling away from the circle. Because if I pull in, if I go this way, you guys know what's going to happen. You can see it, right? Can you picture it? going to be intentional. Okay. All right. So, there you have it. That's our palette technique. 
Okay, I'm gonna pause it for a minute. Okay, next thing I'm gonna show you is a stippling brush. This is called a stippling brush. The bristles are really hard and they're all uniform to the same shape. So it forms kind of a circle at the top. I like to kind of spread it out. Now this is the, you can use this brush for like bushes. It's really fun. So I'm just gonna dab into my paint and then paint some off. And over here, we are going to draw So you got your very tip top. Now, because painting, that's not the same color, I think. Um, you don't want just a you know one color painting, one one D painting. You want it three D or two D. So we're gonna add some color, other colors in it. I'm holding on to this like this because you need to, you have to push it pretty hard to get it to go down. So you're just gonna stipple this really cool tree. Now because I usually like to do there's you can do multiple colors of green in your painting. And that gives it that dimension that you want. Okay, I'm going to do a deep green. Give it some background. Like there's some darker leaves. And actually, I'm going to do the dark. This is a little brush. I couldn't find my bigger one. But there's bigger brushes that you can use for stippling. I'm just going to lay. Of course, you want to think of it like a really tall triangle. This is your top of your tree, so it's going to be obviously skinnier. And you should come down. I'm going to widen the triangle. You can make it as textured as you want it. You can make a thicker texture. I'm just gonna bring it to here. Now that dark color, I'm gonna wash it off. But if you wash it off, get your brush as dry as you can. You wanna start fresh. Okay, so then I'm gonna go with my next color, go to the top of that dark. And just keep loading your brush because it's gonna get the dark color in it. So you just want fresh paint in every. And you can also dry it off. Okay, so some more stippling. I would do one, two, three, about four or five stipples, and then you're gonna need to load your brush again. Otherwise it's gonna get loaded with paint. Right, happy little tree. Oh, just kidding. It's not that happy yet because it needs highlighted. Some lighter colors in there. We'll just throw those. And they go. They <laughs> they go dark fast. So you have to keep reloading. This bright color. Too fast. You can even do add some white. Some really bright highlights. All right, I'm going to show you. This is a fan brush. This can be used for lots of different things. I'm gonna get some browns. Uh, and I'm just gonna take, I'm gonna take my little one. Some people like to use this. I'm gonna get a different canvas. Pause. Unpause. Okay. So I've got my brown on my um, fan brush, shaped like a fan. 
And there's different things you can do. Let's say you want to put some grass on your painting. It's dead grass, so it's brown. All right, I'm going to put some green in there. It's got colors, kind of colors going on. Just going to add a little white, kind of blend it. I said white, water, and add a little water. And of course, you're going to have some other color back here because when we start a painting, we always start with the sky, right? And then we do the hills, and then we do the grass or trees, whatever comes next. If there's a little lake, you'll do that. So this would be really, this really would be your last thing that you would paint. This is a fun one. Okay, you can also do, I love, um, in Bob Ross, he paints trees with this. So he takes the main color, get a darker green, this green here, and he takes it, and he just puts his little tree down like this. Okay, oh, there's a fuzzy. And then, do kind of a little, um, you just start with the edge. You don't want to use the whole width of the brush. So I'll start with the edge, do a few little top ones, because it's not as big up here, right? And as you go up, you want to rock. It's like you're rocking. And I'm putting like two different colors on this brush. I'm just dabbing it in there. So you get some fun branches. You just kind of rock it. Just till you get it wet, um, till it looks like what you want it. And personally, I would like to use a liner brush for the tree trunk because it just gives it a little bit more. But because I had, and these, these, um, brushes get really thick with paint, so you can use your palette knife, scrape it off, and then you've got your paintbrush again, and dab the tip in. Just fill it up. Now, when this dries, it's kind of a darker color. Okay, I'm just going to step there. Let's go clean more, right? Um, what you might want to do is add a lighter color to it. He's always like filling in. It's kind of fun. This one, you just want to use the edge up here when you, otherwise, it's going to get kind of funny. Let's go down. In there. Okay, so now you have a fun little pine tree. And then you can, after it dries, take a really light color and just go over the top. I'm trying to see. Maybe I'll just add this. Okay, I'm going to let that dry and then we'll, we'll try it some more. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys a really great way to do like mountains or some, when you're doing an edge, I want to show you and you want it, we're doing abstract, so we don't want it blended. Let's say you want a really fine, defined line. What you're gonna do, um, I'm just gonna do this mountain here, right here. Of course that was supposed to be done before the tree, but we're just practicing. Okay, so fill your brush up with paint. You're gonna drag. Sorry, this is just, it's hard because I like to use my palm of my hand right here. My, not my palm, but you know, the side of my hand to rest on the canvas. So then I just take the paint and I pull the brush along that edge that I drew. It's easier for me to draw it, but it might, you might be just fine just winging it. 
but for me, I like to. Okay, so do you see how nice that edge is? Just, it really takes a lot of practice. Okay, next technique I want to show you guys, this is called a stippling. No. Uh, oh my goodness, I just lost it. Yeah, is it a stippling tool? Yeah, stippling tool. Okay, this is great to do dots. So we're gonna do, we're gonna do some cute little berries. First, I'm gonna water my brush down a little bit. And over here, I'm just gonna do some berries. Here's a leaf. Just gonna go. The really cool thing with the leaf is, what you wanna do is you wanna start with a bit of paint on your brush. So hopefully you can see that. You see that? And you're gonna start at the point and you're gonna bring it down and you're gonna push your brush flat. Sorry, I'm not watching the camera. Start at a point and push it flat and bring it around and it'll give you a full, and then you can just take your tip of your brush and finish it. And let's say, let's do another one. Paint. Make sure you guys can see this. Okay, got that. Now, I need some red. We're gonna make some fun little berries. Um, I'm actually gonna use the end of a paintbrush because I want some bigger berries. Take the end of your paintbrush, get lots of paint because you want a pretty, a pretty good size paint. So you can see this. And then I start and I just bring it out and it's kind of going in a circular motion if I want it bigger. Load it again. Another berry, this looks like a holly. And then I'm gonna show you that stippling tool in just a minute. A third one, okay. No brainer, I'm sure. Um, now I wanna put a little dimple on my white berry. Ah. So I'm gonna take and load my stippling tool with white, and then I'm going to just do a little dot. Okay, oops. It's best if you let your red dry first, but there, that gives it that. You could also do just like a little line with these. Shh, pull it down. Or you can use a brush. Okay. Um, have you guys ever seen, did we ever do dot painting in class? I don't know if we did it. I think I did it with the younger group last year. So these are awesome if you do, if you're doing a dot painting. Because it's already shaped the way you want it. And you're just going to put dots. Oh, or that's another technique you could use for. Um, Abstract painting. You want to put paint um, whatever you're painting. Let's say you do a tree and you want to stipple the trunk with a lighter color. You could do that with this. Okay. Um, the other technique, and I, some of you already know this one and have seen it done, but this technique is with a liner brush. This is what you make lines with on your painting, right? So I like to water my paint down so it's not very thick, but it's not super watery. I don't like watercolors. It's just a thinner paint. And I like to mix it around in my paint, so I'm just mixing it, and then I like to twirl my brush in circles very gently, and then it makes a nice clean. The bristles are nice and clean. They're not um, like flared out. Okay, this is a great one for branches. Let's see if I can do it without putting my hand. And I really like to use my rest of my hand on the canvas for this. So I think I'm gonna go down here. But let's say you're doing a branch. You're gonna wanna, you're gonna take your brush and about 
three quarters of it you're going to put down on the canvas and you're going to drag it and then you're going to bring it up so it's a point. Do you see how it made it thicker? I'm going to just do it again. So we're going to take it and I'm not pushing very hard. It's more like the tip this time because I don't, I've already got the thick part. Um, now some of you know this little trick, but when you're doing branches, guess what? They're Y's. Just think of a Y. And they are always going to be skinnier the further you go out, right? So this, I'm going to thicken that branch up a little bit. And then another Y. So cute. Another Y. Oh, let's do a baby Y. Look. Got that? And just keep going. So twirl that in your paint again. I'm going to go up for another branch. Just keep it going until it disappears. So what you're doing is you're starting and you're dragging. And then you're coming just to the tip. You're using the very tip of this paintbrush. I don't know why it's so blurry to get that very fine, skinny branch. So this is a fun thing to practice. Another thing this is good for, I'm gonna do a little kitty cat. Let's say I've got her all done. She's so cute. Cute kitty cat. Okay, her eyes, that's not where her eyes go, but I'm just, can't do it with this. All right, she got her nose. You can use your stippling brush, or I mean, your liner brush. Thin that water, thin that water down, and then this time, when you're rolling, I want you to bring it up, and you're just rolling the tip of it. Okay, so you don't have a lot of paint on it. And this is really fun because you can. Just make sure you can see this. Start and just pull out, pull out, pull out. Whiskers. And what am I doing? <laughs> okay, I'm losing it. All right. Ugh. Just practice. I mean, just take this technique and just get a piece of paper and practice it. It's really good if you rest your hand right here. You got some to be. Um, got some. I got paint all over my wrist. Um, stability, and then you're just gonna take your brush. Practice doing those lines. Practice, practice, practice. And, you know, there's always things like, if you don't like one of those um, little whiskers, you can wash it out if it hasn't dried. If you just did it and you're like, ooh, that didn't look so good. So then you can just, you get a Q-tip or just the end. This has a bunch of green paint, but I'm just showing you things you can do or you can paint over it with acrylics. Um, okay, so the next thing I want to show you guys, and I'm going to actually send this to you. Um, I'm going to send pictures on Google Classroom to have a bunch of different pictures of ideas, but we're just going to do this really fast. So I'm just going to flip my page. We are going to put some paint down. And this is going to be super colorful. I'm going to pause while I get my paint out. <laughs> okay, I'm back. All right, so we're going to do. Okay. Okay, did you see that? That's rude. All right, we're I got all these colors. Just wanted a bunch of different colors. And I'm just going to start painting my page. All different colors. Okay. Here. Here. There is a method to this madness, I promise. Think about that. And a little white. Come on, a little white. Kind of just fill that in. That's kind of fun. Add some color. Okay. We'll rinse it again. Ooh, maybe the yellow. Lemon yellow. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's 
something you do. Back in here. Yellow is very translucent. Green, so there's some green on it. That's kind of fun. I hope you guys are having fun. Let me know what you think of this video. What would you like to see me do? <clears throat> Prove on. I don't tell you guys to drink. I'm just going to leave that that color. It's hard for you guys. I'm going to show it to you in just a minute. <clears throat> Some green. It's kind of fun. Okay, I'm going to pause. Okay, you just filled in all your background, right? Just fill it in crazily like this. Kind of have an, uh, I have a little plan here. So this is the sky and this will be some other things that I draw. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to use, find some really cool stuff around the house that you could use as um, textures in your paint. So that's a little big. So I'm going to make it a little smaller and I'm going to take this more bubbly, the bumpy part, and I'm going to dip it in my paint like this. So I just squirted some paint down on a paper plate. Okay, and I'm just going to rub it. So then I have some paint, not all over the everything, but just part of it. And I'm going to take this and push it down on my book. Not too hard because you just want the top part. And I'm just going to put it over where I did purple on mine. And it's just some fun texture. Okay, I want you to see what you can come up with. Um, maybe you want to do the top of a toothbrush. Let's do some green here. Some green. Dip that in, but then get, get a lot of it off because we don't want it to be a blob. We want it to be pokey, right? Let's do that over the... Uh, let's do that over the yellow area. And you probably want to wait till it dries. I'm just doing this quick so you guys can see. Okay. Let's close. I'm going to find a few more things and then I'll go to our next step. Okay, another thing you can do if you have stamps, you can get some paint on your stamps. And you've got to wash these right afterwards or they won't come up. And I'm just going to push it down. Cool. Okay, it just looks so cool. Show you in just a minute. And then I'll do the next one. Right here. I don't really want it to go to the top. Push that down. And then I have um, a leaf. That would be kind of fun to put just a leaf stamp on. Maybe what color? Do I have any colors left? Paint that. Let's see what that looks like. It's kind of wet. So it's kind of giving it a texture. There we have it. Can you see that okay? Isn't that fun? Have all those textures? So find what you can. You don't have stamps. You could also make stamps out of a potato if you didn't know, or sponges or foam. Just find things around your house you can make stamps out. I'm going to pause to show you the last technique that I'm going to, what I'm going to do with this, and then I'll show you my end. I'll take a picture of my end one and unload it. And then you guys can create with this technique, then I'm going to show you the next thing, anything that you want. Okay, here's the final thing we're going to do. Sorry, I've done my brush. I'm going to take my liner. And I'm going to get it a little wet, get some black on it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some clouds up here. And just keep dipping it. Some little cloud. If you're not comfortable with this technique yet, you can use a Sharpie. They also have paint pens, so obviously we can't go to Michael's and get them, but if you have any around, 
or just a black gate pin. You can use that. All right, there's my first cloud. Do another one over here, just a little baby one. Next thing I'm gonna do, I am gonna create some houses down or some buildings. It's gonna be a little town. So I'm gonna do a roof line here. You can draw them on first if you need to. Just gonna get them. Once again, if you want to use a Sharpie, you can do that. It's not going to be as... Make sure your paint's dry. Do a Sharpie. Make sure, please, please. It will plug up your pen. Dragging it down. I put a lot of paint on that just because I didn't want to have to. And my lines are uneven, but I like it. Bottom of the house. Match up the corners. A little window here. So this is just a little window. I want to do a little chimney. Oh, get my brush wet. Sometimes your paint gets really thick and it doesn't move around wet. Well, you want to add water to it. Okay. Um, there's other things you can continue to do. Let's see. Oh, there's my stick under sheet. Right, everything got dumped out. Okay, so I've got my stick under somewhere. Somewhere it is. You got left over, but the, nope, there it is. Okay, so the end of this, I'm going to take. Mix that around, make a pink, and then I'm just going to do some dots, maybe. <laughs> dots, yes. doesn't make a really round dot, but it's kind of a fun flowery dot. I think that'd be cool over here. Should look really good right there. Some polka dots. So you can continue to add fun shapes. I'm just going around in a circle. Let's continue to add stuff. This is just a really fun, fun painting. Okay, so one more thing I'm going to show you because I'm going to do more houses and I'll show you in my end when I'm finished. But I want to do a cloud. I mean, I want to paint a white line on the inside of the black on this cloud just to give it some more fun. And I think I want to use a different paintbrush. Just using a round size two. Where is it at? There it is. Does it want to focus? There. Okay. Just make sure you don't put your hand in your paint. going kind of fast because I don't want you guys to have to sit here forever. But take your time with this. You don't have to be rushed. Okay. Look how fun. Do you guys like it? Paint whatever you want. If you guys want, I mean, paint this background like this. But if you want to do like a farm or the ocean or the inside of a house, anything. Um, dinosaur land. Turtle land, anything you want. It'd be so cute. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Okay, take care.